own energy, your own flow, the drug controls it for you. And you actually learn, instead of like, okay, let's make myself happy or calm or whatever, uh, that instead of self-mastery, you give away more of the authority of like how, uh, yeah, how you are controlled or how you feel to an outside influence to the drug or uh, it can be to, to sexual addiction or games or TV or uh, gambling. <laughs> and basically you're not saying like, okay, I am the lord and master of my own emotions or my own thoughts. You're basically giving away that authority. And it's basically uh, giving away authority. Uh, chromatically, you're saying, like, okay, listen, this life, human being, is just too, too difficult for me, it's too complex, give me a simpler form. So, yeah, you're basically wasting the complexity you're given. And. <laughs> or a lot more the shamanic kind of herbs and plants and plant teachers and so on. Yeah, that's. Um, uh, basically, you, you're in a way doing the same thing. You're also indeed uh, uh, inviting the force in to, to do something with you. But it's uh, a very different attitude because you uh, see it as a teacher. Um, basically, you try to become very aware of how things change in you. Uh, for instance, if you, if you take uh, peyote or something, you notice, like, gosh, okay, my energy becomes higher, it gets focused. And, I let go of certain things, certain parts of my mind which are blocking me, they stop, and here I go. Yeah. And if you pay attention and you do that two or three times, you should be able to do that yourself. And that's going to be the purpose of the plant and the spirit of the plant to guide you in this. And so um, you can be humble and say, like, okay, I don't know how to do this, please teach me. And this is a way of learning. But, uh, and the same actually in, in working with crystals and other forms of medicine. Uh, you ask them to do something uh, for you and then, well, if all goes well after a few weeks you won't need them anymore because you have integrated that knowledge into yourself. Mm. That's a very good question, thank you. Mm. Okay, so uh, we'll be doing a little bit more exercises soon. Um, so one, one of the things I want you to practice with is indeed like uh, trying to build up the wall a bit, uh, bit more strong. I'm really saying like, okay, both my willpower, I want this wall to be there. Emotionally, I'm going to withdraw. And also I'm going to visualize, okay, there's a wall here and negative walls are not going to come in to see if that has any effect. And um, then I'm also to, uh, going to place a little bit of pollution there. Uh, to see if you can try to push it out and flush it out. See if you're able to cleanse yourself. But uh, the biggest problem is, is often not the ability to cleanse yourself, but just recognizing, feeling that something is wrong. Uh, so the self-awareness is very important for, for the spiritual warrior, and that you also know that you have the power to decide what energies are going to be in my space. Yeah. Uh, because it is your space, it is also your responsibility to, to, yeah, to clean your house. Mm -hmm. And if you notice, like, okay, there's a, this pollution there, uh, it's like not just using your force, but also using your cunning. Like, okay, how do I drip this? And you know, if you don't go into a panic or whatever, but just remain calm. And just say, like, okay, it's an energy, and in the same way I can guide my own energies, I can guide other energies, but I have to tune to them. Because it's, it's a kind of a recognition, like, okay, uh, it's like a stone, like I can't move the stone because it's not part of my body, but if I attune myself or if I grasp the stone, I can move it just as simply as I move my body. There's a kind of a weight, there's a kind of a resistance. But this way you can move out entities or negative energies which put it your So uh, one of the most, most common ways, um, I can use you as an example, just remain there, um, is actually to, uh, to repackage it. So I can have a, a negative energy, but you, you put a kind of a sugar coating on it, so that the other person thinks it's a positive energy. And only when the energy like, is already accepted in the other person's system, then they will 
notice like on Gosh, it has a negative effect. Um, the, uh, often you need to know the other person's defenses. You need to know how the other person works to be able to bypass them. And the, uh, you can do it by basically having the other person there, or you can do it also by having an object of the, of the person or a piece of hair or blood or something else. <laughs> but yeah, I'll just show you how it's, how it's done with, with, an, with an aura. So if I'm a person who wishes my wish harm, I would just go around and stand around and feel a little bit of his aura. And well, I would notice, like, gosh, okay, there's various defensive layers. So if I want to, to get in, I need to bypass all those layers. And uh, I will just observe him in a crowd and see how he's interacting. Like, and I might notice, like, gosh, okay, there's this girl he really likes and he's really open to her. Aha. <laughs> <laughs> so he doesn't open just his mind, he opens his heart, and yeah, he's really, yeah, really into her. So what I would do is basically I would take my, my yeah, negative uh, pattern, like, of course, I he's much too healthy, I want his life energy really to slow down, so, um, yeah, that's a, that's a very negative pattern, like, okay, damn him, how dare he be, <laughs> that's <so> cool, <laughs> okay, so, and, um, uh, that's basically a, a, a pattern which I would, uh, 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 give to an elemental spirit. So an elemental spirit can basically say like, okay, there's all these channels of life energy flowing through him. I call up an earth elemental, so you just call it up from the earth. They tend to obey, so as long as there's a higher force calling it, it will obey. And then I have this elemental spirit in my hands. So, and, and you need to demonstrate, I need to demonstrate to the spirit what I wanted to do, so now I have to like hurt myself a little bit to like, like really twist uh, uh, my energy flow and then you can see like okay so that's what you want me to do okay yes that's what I want you to do and then I can become myself again and now it's like okay well I know what to do now so now I have to smuggle it in <laughs> so then you would basically uh, uh, pull a little bit of the energy from the aura of the person you like or from an animal you like, or whatever, and then basically wrap that energy. The animal energy. Yes, yeah. Around this elemental spirit. So that it's kind of hidden from your view. And this elemental spirit, I can just like uh, uh, throw it towards you, like say, okay, well, there's your target. <laughs> Is it going to be? Because <laughs> <laughs> well, I notice right here I can't feel it. And we are pretty close also. Uh, so the aura is a lot smaller than it used to be. So now for you, the challenge is like, okay, you might be noticing the car shift feeling. Like, yeah, I feel a bit like, um, like the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> I woke up early, but it's not yet the end of the day. So the thing is, First, to try to find out what's going on. 
And there, first, if you call, it's just me or I'm stressed or whatever, that's always the first reaction. But you do not recognize the person on the tank because you just well, it's just not isn't it? <laughs> and, well, then you try to become aware of, like, okay, try to energize yourself. You usually have a kind of an exercise or a breathing or something to do to energize yourself. Yeah. You give that a try. <laughs> okay. from the effect different from when you normally did it? Um, yeah, so the, I guess it's, it's different. I still feel the, the effect of what you put there, the, the tiredness, although it changed a little bit, but not uh, a lot. Yeah, not as much. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can fight against it, but it's a programming which just keeps on going and going and going until it tries to wear you <coughs> down. Yeah. So, now the important thing is to try to find it. So, try to become aware of where in, the, in your body or in your aura field has the feeling gone. And it's basically you try to move your energy and to. And so, like you can move your hands and scan your body a bit for the space around you. I don't feel it. <laughs> but it was a great show. <laughs> what? <laughs> I would say that you halted your hand. Yeah. yeah, but that's not really because I felt something, it's just because uh, I tried to, because I felt in the beginning I tend to go in my head, so I tried to just shift the energy down to feel better, not because I felt something. Well, it is where it is. <laughs> no. Lucky. Like, like Try to, like try to try to feel it. Yeah. Can, can I ask something? Because mm -hmm. um, just a second ago, when we were doing mm -hmm. this, uh, I felt this uh, intense wave of, of sadness. I, I almost had to cry. It was like five seconds. Mm -hmm. yeah. And where, where did that come from? That's a pure reaction. Because yeah. basically, what it's doing, if it's squeezing the life energy, you're going to go to a depression. So, if you if I leave it like this. So. I feel it, yeah, I can feel it. There's more kind of a, a hole. Here's more mag magnetism, and here's not so much. Yeah. It's starting to grow now. <laughs> no, was, this big one, I put it here. Let's not talk too much now. Let's <laughs> 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 now. So, now, once you've dis discovered it, it's basically, you have to, well, First, get across with it, just make contact with it. So don't fight it straight away, just make contact with it. Because in a way, the, the, the entity, the, the mental which I gave you, doesn't want to harm you, it's just doing what you stop. Right. <laughs> so... No, I just tell him something different. You tell him something different. <coughs> yeah. so just to stop doing that, and maybe go back to the earth, and leave your body. And you always do that from a position of authority. You feel that you have the right to command whatever is in your space. You're the king. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Can I pull it out first, or is it? You can pull it out first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so what we're going to do now is to uh, ask an air elemental to shield you. So earth elementals, they have the power to really work with the, with the structure. The water elementals work with the flow. The air elementals work with the connection. And actually through your aura, you're connected to other energies outside of you. And you can ask an air elemental to basically keep a certain thing out. Uh, air elementals are relatively easy to find because they're all around us. Uh, but elementals can be big or small. And if you want a bigger one, uh, then you actually need a little bit of wind because they're attracted to motion, to, to things moving around. So people talking, wind blowing, they tend to attract bigger elementals. But it's very easy because you can just blow. Basically, by blowing over your hand, usually where the air makes contact with something else, that's where an elemental thinks like, okay, this is another element where I can pick up an energy and carry it somewhere else. So by basically allowing the wind to touch your hand, you invite the elemental to come there. So once you have this elemental, it's a little bit harder because like with the earth elemental, you can just yeah, change your body and put yourself in a different state and the elemental will copy. But here, for an air element, you have to be able to control your aura a little bit. So you have to be able to say, like, okay, uh, look at my pattern again, and now I'm going to like, yeah, just think of ice, and it's freezing, and that it's very solid and very stable, the energy around me. So and now the element is looking around a little bit, so it takes a while. Oh, okay. The element says, I think I've got it. <laughs> So what I do now is I give you this elemental. So you feel it? Mm -hmm. okay. Then you basically have to send it into your aura. So you blow. Very good. Yeah. You notice that the energy of the element is spreading all around you. So it's forming a shield now around your heart. And if I try the same thing, I call it the earth elemental. I wrap it around with the same pass keys as I did before. I try to send it to you. It kind of rebounds and it's back in my head. <laughs> because it's now like a rubber ball where yeah, the elemental is like, okay, sorry, I can't go. <laughs> and it's the same way actually with, with, other, uh, with other energies. So if I come with a lot of aggression and I try to upset you, you probably feel that. You just stay very calm. Okay. Now to dismiss the air elemental, because air elementals, they're a bit more, yeah, they're also following, but also they like to fulfill their purpose to carry energy somewhere. So to dismiss it, you basically call up an energy in your hand, like lava or some positive energy. You give it to the elemental to spread, so you call it. And you feel that the elemental is gathering itself back from the aura onto your hand. And then you offer a bit of healing energy or tobacco if you're in the Native American tradition. And you allow it to go. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <coughs> how do you dismiss it again? So you you say the love. Uh, you 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 blow here. Yes. You, you first you gather it again. So it comes out of your aura onto your hand. And then you give it a little energy, which it can take to other people or bring somewhere, because that's what it likes to do. <laughs> okay. So we've uh, practiced a little bit in, in working with uh, mental forces. Um, as I said before, elemental forces are not well, neither good nor evil, they just are. And, well, they just do what we ask them to do. Um, these elemental spirits, uh, they actually come in varying sizes. So the smaller ones, they don't have as much energy as the bigger ones. And they cannot comprehend the more complex examples we give. 
Um, and the special case of uh, uh, elemental spirits are actually the, the stones and the crystals. Uh, as I said before, like, uh, yeah, an elemental usually just does what it does. And uh, varying between stones and crystals have actually uh, varying complexities of energy. And uh, within their limits, or within the, their energy fields, which they can encompass, uh, they also follow a certain pattern. But uh, a free elemental will basically just uh, move and, and, and shape itself according to the will. And when they get bound to a physical form, uh, they are usually more restricted in their possibilities, in the things they can do. Um, and uh, if you have, for instance, like a, an amethyst crystal, uh, basically the elemental is, is already like uh, has a little mission. Basically says like, okay, this is what I'll do. This is how I'll reshape and reform the energies, and this is how I actually crystals work on us, feed us, and heal us. And uh, it's basically by choice that you can say like, okay, I will carry this crystal with me, and it will. Uh, give a certain effect on me, but also you always sacrifice a little bit of your flexibility because the crystal is having a certain influence and the elemental is not very flexible, it just runs its progress. Uh, if you're working with a crystal, you can try to readjust a little bit the elemental spirit within it and ask it to do something very specific. Um, the crystal uh, is usually like asleep, it's not doing anything while it's on the earth. If it gets to the surface, it kind of awakens and it tries to adjust itself like, okay, what is around here and how can I use my powers to, uh, yeah, to fulfill my purpose, to help with comfort growth, what, it, what is it that I do? And when a crystal gets well, found, it's usually like carried around, it's processed, and Lots of weird stuff happens to it, which usually are only confusing to the elemental. It's like, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> so it will go like, okay, what are all these machines? What are all these people? And so if you find a crystal in a store, it's usually like just one big mess. It's very confused. <laughs> um, and often the more, uh, yeah, the more processed the crystal is, the more confused it will get because it's gone further away from its, from its natural form, its natural form. Uh, but you can recondition the crystal. Um, and you can uh, let the crystal go to sleep by burying it in the earth, and then it will just go to sleep, or the elemental spirit might actually leave, and another might come in. And then when you find it again, when you get it out of the earth after a few days, then it will look, okay, what's this world? And like, who should I attune to? Well, if you're the one holding it, it's like, okay, well, apparently you're the one who's my life purpose. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> or existence purpose. <laughs> so, yeah, what can I do for you, oh, master, oh, father? Oh. <laughs> but actually, to, uh, um, yeah, to make that clear to a crystal, uh, it needs to be able to, to, to listen to you. And, uh, and you're always radiating energies, and by actually putting it in your radiance dome, making it have contact with one of your chakras, it can pick up on your energy and try to learn from it. And by holding the crystal actually uh, on your third chakra, it learns, okay, this is you, this is who you are, this is who I'm with, and actually the crystal, instead of just working for everybody or attuned to everybody, it becomes more attuned to you. It's like, okay, well, you're this person, I, I want to attune myself to, and it will yeah, become more synchronous with you. Uh, if you hold it next to your heart, it usually really awakens the spirit in it. It's like, okay, I'm not just being here, the other person's not just being here, there's actually something happening here, there's a life force, there's uh, yeah, it, it feels me, I feel it. There's a communication starting to happen. And by holding it to your forehand, you can kind of envision your relationship with the crystal. Like, okay, I'm going to carry you around my neck always, or I want to use you now for a few weeks, or 
actually I want to give you to this other person to heal them. And if you have a kind of a feeling of like how you want to be, so you try to put yourself in a more ideal situation, like okay, I want to be really serene and calm and meditative. And you hold that image, you hold the crystal to your hand. It will pick up on that, that idea and it will start doing that and creating an energy like that around you. Um, some crystals work best when they're carried on the skin. Other crystals work best when they're just around you and they uh, yeah, work with the atmosphere around you. So it's not so much a protection a crystal, but it is kind of an anchor. Um, there's many stones which can be used in this way. Uh, so one of them is the labradorite. Uh, the labradorite uh, is, I think, probably the best stone for, for personal defense. Um, because basically what it does, it makes the, the energy in your aura more dense, more compact. And especially the energy uh, in, your, in your filtering layers, in your boundaries. So your walls pretty much triple in, in their strength and how much of the energy they can keep out. So if you're just being sensitive, you don't like being in a bus or go to the supermarket or the busy street, Labradorite is your friend. <laughs> And do you carry it on the skin? Or uh, it's or best to carry it on the skin. Yes. But also, uh, the size does matter. Some people carry <laughs> flakes of Labradorite, and tends not to work yeah. very much. Uh, so, they a good sized. It doesn't matter where on the skin? Or no. Uh, because actually, your energy system uh, needs to learn from it, so it needs mm -hmm. to be able to communicate with you. Yeah. And Labradorite works actually on your energy, so if I put it on the table next to me, it doesn't do anything. It needs to be in contact with me to shape my aura. You know, one layer of cloth, I can see my pocket. Mm -hmm. On the skin is best. <laughs> yeah. like, it, it, like it has an aura, it can pick up energies, but if you have the choice, that's the best. Yeah. Um, another example, which is Often, often used, it's, it's also worn, uh, it's basically a uh, 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 quartz crystal. Uh, the quartz crystal doesn't work on the person, so it doesn't change my aura or my energy system, it changes the energy around me. Uh, basically, what it, uh, the function of, of the quartz crystal is to create a more like, harmonious energy. Um, Berkhamsal. yeah. Um, so what it, what it does is there's, there's energies which are not in sync, actually it, it looks for what's the major energy here, what's the strongest one, okay, I will try to adjust what I can to the major energy. And if the major energy is, is good, well that's a good thing, if you are usually in a harmonious state, or you pray, and the rock crystal is there, it will try to hold on to that, to that harmonious energy. But if the energy is really gone the other way, and the most dominant energy is a disharmonious energy or a negative energy which you don't want, the rock crystal is just going like, okay, what's the strongest energy around? Okay, well, oh, we're all into hating things. Okay, well, it's it, it, it really upset. <laughs> so it, 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 it harmonizes, but you should always be, be cautious because it's not a cleansing thing. Yeah. Quartz in my pockets around for a while, yeah. mm -hmm. and I really noticed that so many people, these strangers in stores, they were like, they called me sweetheart, and mm -hmm. everyone was like, so kind to me. Like, and uh, now I just have it in my purse, and it doesn't really have the same effect. But when I really had it in my pocket, it was like, oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, because like when you're carrying it close to you, then it's basically looking. You are the strongest source. Mm -hmm. So basically, your own energy, like it harmonizes what you radiate around you. And when you're carrying it in your purse, it's probably picking up and just all kinds of things. All kinds of things. But does it constantly fluctuate? So if I'm in a very bad mood, that's carrying yes. out my bad mood? Yes. Yeah. It, it's, it's, yeah, it doesn't really choose. It just follows. That's all the mentors do. Yeah. But you can't condition. You don't condition it. Uh, well, it, it is conditioned in a way. Because it, because it already has a shape, like a free elemental can do everything, but it's in, in the shape of a stone or a crystal, 
it already has a, a more limited function. It is already conditioned to do a certain thing. It's conditioned to can't ask. Hmm? It's conditioned yes, to can't to copy. copy. Yes. Okay. To reinforce this promise pattern. Yeah. Okay. Um, another popular one is the, the trauma line. Uh, Tourmaline is also uh, used a lot as a, as a uh, protective uh, rock. Um, it's not the best, actually. Uh, what Tourmaline does, it, uh, it shields you a little bit, but only on a, on a very, uh, uh, on the very last level. So basically against emotional attacks, it won't work against mental attacks, it doesn't work. But against more physical attacks, the heavier energies, it does give some protection. And it actually helps to ground them. So it's kind of, uh, it, it reinforces actually the connection to the earth, and the earth is always accepting energies and purifying them. So the tourmaline is, is good to have uh, in combination actually with the rock crystal, because like the heavier energies get grounded by the tourmaline, and the light energies remain and they get harmonized by the rock crystal. Copper is also sometimes used, often also to make um, protective charms. Yantas. Hmm? Yantas. Hmm? Also? Oh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and um, what, what copper does is basically it guides energies. So a copper in itself is, is in a way a, a conductor. So if you're basically saying like, okay, I will like wear a copper thingy to protect me, well, that doesn't do very much. But if you shape the copper, then the energy will flow in a, in a specific pattern, and that pattern will radiate. Mm -hmm. So if you want to make a charm, making it out of copper will work, but the material itself doesn't protect you. There's often some confusion in that. A charm, what's a charm? An uh, amulet. Yeah. Did you ever hear about um, the harmonizer of uh, slips curling? <coughs> no, I haven't. Okay. That's curious. It's also made from copper wire. In a it's a shape in different sizes. And Is it so like a purple generator? No, 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 the, the harmonizer of Slim Sperling, it's, uh, okay. it, it purifies the air even, it, yeah. it works against yeah. spirits. Uh, yeah. you know, and basically what you can do is by shaping the copper, the energies around it will follow that shape, yeah. and by flowing in a certain <coughs> pattern, <coughs> they radiate that pattern. Uh, so it's a, it's a little bit yeah, com comparable to, to incense, which basically creates a certain energetic atmosphere around you. Um, one thing which works very well in blocking things is actually uh, aluminium. So you can just grab some aluminium foil, rub yourself in it, and you're perfectly safe. <laughs> but you're also perfectly unable to, to really let energy flow. And also, already, like really, really thin foil will totally block lots and lots of energies. <laughs> so and that's one of the good things if you want to use it in that way. But in a bad way, it's often used to, to insulate homes and to make <coughs> food and things like this. And well, also the energy of the, of the home is totally blocked. And yeah, then the people get very depressed in those kinds of homes because there's no flow. Most of the time, gold is uh, mined under really not such nice uh, circumstances. Eh? By mining slavery, how does that influence what you're in, having in your hand? Right no, actually, not at all. Okay. <laughs> Sad to say, in a way, but, <laughs> but basically, the mental spirits, like, they, they don't yeah, really understand emotions and then those energies, they just go beyond them. They don't have any morality. But other stones yeah. as well. Uh, yeah, yes, but, but yeah, stones, they usually don't carry energies of, of what happened to them, which is very different, actually, from plants and oils. Because and animal parts, because they yeah might get very grumpy because <laughs> they're mistreatment and yeah they can really turn against you. The stone is usually neutral. Uh, doesn't mean that the stone really suits you always. It might think like okay you're weird, like we can flow together, and so it might try to resist. Because but yeah it doesn't really have a, a higher conscience. If you go to work and to get
together with the crystal and carrying it on you, is that the elemental will listen to you and not to your opponent. <laughs> so actually, if you're indeed using a charm or using a stone, you should actually really bind it to you so that it will recognize you. Okay, this is the person to listen to. If you don't do that and you're just wearing a stone around your neck, then not a person comes along and talks to the elemental and tells that stone to harm you, it will, because it doesn't know any better. So this is a very important precaution to take if you're actually wearing jewelry. Uh, so the aura is also like our, uh, our energetical skin. The aura is very reactive. So you can, the aura just reacts within seconds after coming into contact with the new energy. Uh, the aura has several patterns. Um, one of them is to become uh, spiky. Um, so normally in healthy aura it's smooth, a little bit like a pebble. Uh, uh, in a river, it's, yeah, it's, it has a, an optimal and very smooth contact with the energy surrounding it. Um, and it becomes a little bit spiny, like a cactus, if it, uh, with certain people, and actually it does spikes. Because, so your energy is protruding in the other person's energy body and thereby disrupting it. So, in the same way as a cactus, your aura can become like a cactus and then just, like, yeah, try to push away certain energy. Um, other people have a pattern of, uh, uh, of like moving the aura backwards. So if an other energy comes in, which they don't like, the aura retreats and retreats and retreats. And basically, energetically, the person is standing behind their bodies. Mm. And then the person often feels a little bit dizzy or boozy and has trouble just focusing because, yeah, the energy is not like we really centered on the own body again. Uh, what also often happens is that like the, the, the aura doesn't go all the way down. But it comes down to the, to, the, to the knees or to the ankles. Uh, and that often happens because people are too much in their head. Because the aura uh, is fed by all the different chakras. And if the higher chakras are more active, then that part of the aura is going to swell and become bigger, while the lower parts become smaller. Um, another thing to be aware of is that uh, certain people have, have one barrier, other people have several. So the outer barrier tells you a little bit about the person, but not everything. Um, and how the person uh, reacts to a, to a threat is often the same. So uh, if a person is being attacked by aggression or a sadness or uh, a bad atmosphere, they often react in, in identically the same manner. And if a person really means you harm, they can see like, okay, well, this is how they defend themselves, and they can attune themselves to this and try to use your own defenses against you. So if you become spiky, well, by constantly having a negative energy around you, you keep away all the other energies and you starve yourself to death by your own defenses. Um, if you have the tendency to go back, to go out of your body, um, the, your body is also a vault. Like your energy is protected while it is in your body. And um, if you notice, like, okay, I'm receding, I'm getting a little bit dizzy going outside of my body, then actually you become much more vulnerable to other attacks. So they often would launch a two-step attack at you to first like threaten you a little bit, you flee, and then they grab you. Because you don't have the protection of your physical self anymore. Um, if you have various layers of defense, um, what they often will do is try to use this, this split personality against you. So uh, you are in a way subdividing yourself, like, okay, this is my space for like, my force, this is my emotional space, and this is the emotions I keep separate from the general public, and this is just my close ones, and all these compartments uh, they help to defend you, uh, but they can also weaken you because it's harder to really use your whole being in a defensive action. So often a person has a lot of compartments, a lot of barriers, and it's a very defensive attitude. And by just applying a lot of strength, you can break down one barrier, and then you can break down the next barrier, and then you can break down the next barrier because the person cannot unify their own energies to oppose the intrusion. So every strength has a weakness in it. 
and um, as Sun Tzu says, um, if you know yourself and if you know your enemy, you will never be defeated. So mm -hmm. self-knowledge is one part of the, of the game, the other part is actually knowing what the other person might do. <laughs> and every move has a counter. So if you know, like, okay, this is happening to me, and you are aware of, your, of the weakness of your own defensive system, then you can recognize and call it. I'm being attacked, this is my weakness. I need to switch to a different defensive system. Instead of like retreating, I become spiky, or instead of becoming spiky, I'll compartmentalize my own. Um, these are a little bit tricky to do by yourself, because you are usually born with one system that you learned from your parents or in your childhood. So almost everybody just has one way of defending themselves. Um, it's only by making contact with other people and feeling like, okay, how are they, their auras functioning, that you can become aware of different ways of, of uh, working. And the defensive systems are stored in our third chakra. And what you can do is you can try to learn from another person's third chakra by basically connecting your third chakra with the third chakra of another person, you can copy patterns. And you can, uh, if you notice, gosh, another person has a different defensive pattern, then you can say, well, okay, let's just connect these chakras and try to pick up the new pattern. And then you can have a whole library of defenses which you can apply if you're being attacked. Okay, uh, I think we're about out of time. And we'll start working tomorrow on the building up different defensive patterns. And then we'll also go into major spirits, life force spirits, and consciousness spirits. Um, I just wanted to say uh, one thing actually uh, uh, a curse is very similar actually to an elemental. A curse doesn't have an idea of right and wrong, it's just a programming which does a certain thing. And it can be handled in the same way. It's just an energy, so you can pick it up and tell us, okay, well, instead of making me sad and miserable, well, stop doing that, make me happy, <coughs> or don't do anything, and then you can leave. So it's not necessary or even wise to, to spend your energy fighting a curse, just bend it around. With authority, doctor, with authority, yes. Because it's an energy, it's a non-conscious energy. And in the same way it was created and programmed, uh, you can deprogram. And you know you have a curse, you have it. In the same way you notice a part of your energy body is not responding. In the same way as, as when there was an entity there, part of the body felt like numb a little bit. And it's the same way with the curse. It takes a certain amount of space in your, in your energy body. So the body Can you assume if you have like a, like a stiff neck? <laughs> Can be, but it's, it's harder to find than a, a, a so it's a little bit similar in structure. Um, one, one other thing is indeed, like what I wanted to say is often, while I want to curse this place there intentionally, uh, it will have a watcher spirit attached to it, which basically watches and, oh, if the person takes away the curse, then it runs home, alerts the person who put the curse there and tells them, oh, <laughs> the new curse is needed and we'll uh, get the curse back. So before you start working with a curse, first make sure you're not being watched. Some curses are fully trapped. So they yeah, so actually as soon as you make contact with it or you try to heal somebody who has a curse. Curse will make copies of itself into the person trying to cure you or to help you. So, yeah, it's always something to be aware of. <laughs> um, but uh, often the location where, where a curse is, it's, it's usually in aura, so it's not usually in the physical body. And, but often on the corresponding spot, the person will often have a feeling of weakness or pain. Or, uh, it can often be felt. And the most uh, uh, common place for curses to attach themselves is around the, the stomach area, the belly area. Can it, can it the curses from the previous diet? Then, uh, uh, well, then it's usually in the spine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But how do you, uh, if you send it, uh, or if you take it or remove it, mm -hmm. how, it goes, uh, how does it go to the 
defended? Uh, well, the, the thing is that uh, it was a guy, yes. Yeah. Well, it's, <laughs> you don't. Yeah, have, you can. Do, and energy is neutral, so you can just. If you take away the thing which is feeding it, which is usually your own life force, then it will disintegrate. Okay. Yeah. But if there was a, a watching spirit, that watching spirit can, has nowhere to go, so it doesn't know where to go. No, it will just like go, like, okay, well, I should try to find this person. It's going to be on a long rest. <laughs> 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 So certain certain parts are hardly conscious or almost mechanical in nature, and others are more conscious. And it's usually by if you're attacked by one or the other, it's usually not so much a problem. If a person combines these two techniques, then you get into trouble. Because then you get a self-perpetuating system. So you take the curse away, there's a spirit there with an extra copy, and puts it back and it keeps on going. <laughs> yeah. It keeps on going. And the same thing like if, if there's a spirit there. Uh, you still have all your own abilities and all your own powers, so you generally have a lot more strength than the spirit does. So you can just kick the spirit's ass and tell it to need to leave. But if the spirit is combined with a curse which weakens you, then it's very hard to get rid of the spirit. But 